Uh, postponement of your 2020 shutdown or turnaround due to COVID-19 and compliance with PSSR. So the first question is, why, why do you need to postpone your shutdown? And at the moment, there are probably many reasons. Um, the first is around minimizing the risk to people who might be on the plant, but also uh, to the operation of the plant itself due to COVID-19. COVID-19 uh, on plants and offshore platforms has been seen, seen recently. Dow Chemical in the States uh, has three people with COVID-19, and they've re had to reduce their operations to one production unit. Equinor, uh, Norwegian oil and gas company in the North Sea, They've also had one person last week with COVID-19, although uh, pleased to say that they've had no new cases confirmed since then. So there's, uh, we want to try and reduce the risk uh, by pre preventing large numbers of people working together in a shutdown. Um, but there is there's an obvious difficulty in carrying out a large shutdown and trying to carry out social distancing policies, which require you to keep a minimum of two meters apart. So the second reason is, is simply around lack of resources and competence. Currently, lots of people are in self-isolation, people are unavailable. So there's an immediate issue with lack of resources, um, both contractors for execution work and perhaps even your own plant team personnel. There's, there's so much uncertainty around, we don't know whether that's gonna impact us for the next few weeks or indeed, uh, as was uh, said in the news a couple of days ago, whether at, this is going to continue for six months. So we don't understand what the resource availability is going to be going to be going forward. Um, many plants have seen, uh, uh, particularly in the oil and gas uh, uh, industry and also in, in chemicals, have seen a, a reduction in demand, uh, and that's put pressure on costs, uh, and therefore. Uh, some companies are trying to uh, do without a shutdown at the moment to try and uh, inc maintain production and also avoid the cost of the, the shutdown itself. There's also a lack of spares uh, at the moment. Critical long lead items may be coming from other, ch other countries, uh, for example, America or, or China previously. Um, there may be uh, some difficulties uh, with uh, your key overhaulers or suppliers, they may be operating at reduced capacity. So you might, you might not be able to get the equipment you need, you might not be able to repair it where you would normally go to to carry out those activities. There's also uh, an increased difficulty in shutdown preparation. We put such a lot of effort into doing this. We, we uh, start uh, 12 to 18 months ahead in terms of major shutdowns, but the, the plans that we've so carefully made have, have been disrupted. And then now it's very difficult to replan at short notice. So we've got a lot of people working from home in self-isolation. They they're not going to have access to drawings or records or equipment information unless they're available electronically. So how many people have put those, those systems uh, uh, such that we, we can do that? And, and of course, there's no access to the plant for many people unless you have a 3D plant visualization in place, again, which not many people do. So there's also finally a requirement for many companies to continue operating. So those that are manufacturing products critical to the COVID-19 response, um, and also more generally, uh, we're trying to keep uh, UK manufacturing going so that when we emerge, into the new business world, there is there is some industry remaining. Uh, we're just going to have a, uh, our first poll question here. Um, so, I'd like, what I'd like you to do is uh, um, pick on one of the answers. So, the first poll question here is: Are you planning to postpone equipment inspections or your shutdown? We've got yes, postpone an individual inspection. Yes, postpone a shutdown maybe one or the other, and no, we're not going to postpone. Okay, and you can see the answers here. So we've got 29% of people saying, 
yes, you're going to either postpone a shutdown and then 22% postponing individual inspections uh, with a with a uh, a large percentage of people in the maybe group as well. So uh, I would say that's uh, so nearly 90% of you are were doing one or the other. So that's a large group of people. That's a large group of companies. Okay, thank you for that. So we'll just move on to the consequences of postponement. So there are a number of consequences of postponing any any shutdown, and these need thought and planning. And the key one at the, at the forefront of a lot of people's minds is around statutory inspections. We need to think what statutory inspections are in, in place for vessels and pipework, tanks, and also other things such as lifts and lifting equipment, uh, which, which uh, require six monthly inspections. We, we need to find out what, what are the due dates for the planned inspections if they're not immediately available. We, we need to then have a look and understand which of these inspections are most critical to us. Can I defer these inspections? What do I need to do? What, what's the impact of uh, deferring uh, an inspection in terms of health and safety and the environment uh, to the business itself? And what about uh, reliability? If, is, a, is a failure going to be more likely as a result? So we're also interested in planned maintenance requirements. Clearly in shutdowns, we have some major equipment overhauls, maybe even large machines. Um, we're going to have a large amount of scheduled critical maintenance in all sorts of areas, in all disciplines. So can this maintenance be delayed? Again, what's most critical? And what's the impact uh, on uh, reliability, safety in the environment? But it's not just about uh, maintenance. It's also about plant performance. These extended run durations are adversely going to adversely impact process performance due to, for example, uh, fouling of pipework uh, and, and production processes and the need for plant cleaning. Catalyst degradation. Can the catalyst uh, last the extended run time? And is there a need for replacement? What's the consequential impact uh, on equipment condition? In addition, we should be looking at projects and modifications. Many of these we were trying to get ready for the shutdown, and now there's a, a lack of re resource. It may mean that we're not able to finish the, some of these off, uh, we, uh, such that they're delayed. So the projects and modifications may be prevented from being installed at this time, and that's going to have an impact. So the question is, what, what is the impact of not doing these critical projects right now? Is that going to affect uh, operation of the plant? Or again, is there going to be uh, some other potentially safety or environmental effect? And the, the consequence of not doing these projects now means that eventually when we get to the shutdown, there's going to be a backlog of these. And that's going to give you an, another headache, which is going to be a larger shutdown to manage in the future. Okay, we've got two poll questions here. Um, we, we've got five of these in total, I should say. Uh, so we've got two in a row here, if that's okay. So the first one is, how long are you planning to postpone your inspections or shutdown for? So we're just trying to get an idea here of what sort of pe what, what people's views are in terms of how long you should you, you may wish to postpone. So we've got most people, it looks like, 37% in the three to six months category. And uh, given what's been said by the government, that may be optimistic, but we'll have to see. 24% uh, in the six to nine months category, 26% in the nine to 12 months category, and nobody more than 12 months, and that, that would seem reasonable. 9% of you uh, who previously answered that you're not postponing. So most people are in the, in the three, three to nine months category. Okay, thank you. And the next question following that is, what's the main reason you're postponing inspections or a shutdown? So we've got five categories here. Lack of resource now, poss possible lack of resource later in the year, uh, a requirement to keep the plant operating, your particular concerns right now about 
COVID, infe COVID-19 infection on the plant uh, or with people there, uh, or the fact that uh, you've, your, your shutdown uh, plant preparation has been disrupted. Okay, so, so that's a very clear response there saying most people's concerns are about COVID-19. So that's uh, either because you can't, uh, so this is around uh, infecting the rest of the plant with, uh, with, uh, with this virus. 18% lack of resource now and 20% may be an issue in, later in the year. So the two, two, two key things there. Okay, thank you very much for that. So we'll just move on uh, now to the regulatory position for postponement. So I'm just going to tell you some things here that you probably know already, um, just to introduce this. So onshore plant, here we're talking mainly about pressure system safety regulations. And PSSR allows for one inspection postponement, but, but requires certain conditions to be attached to this. Uh, coma, control of major accident hazards. Again, inspection postponement uh, is possible. It's not specifically mentioned in the regulations, but the, the assumption is that the requirements lot, uh, have to be uh, similar to PSSR. Offshore installations, um, uh, the regulations here are around the safety case regulations 2015, and there isn't really very much that uh, exactly uh, explicitly tells you about postponement. There is a there's a guide here which I'll mention, which uh, gives you some information. The HID inspection guide, and if you're looking for information, um, the, the MUA 231 guide, and which is also uh, now uh, a SAFED guide, it's uh, dual numbered. The mechanical integrity of plant containing hazardous substances. This gives a good guide to uh, postponement, and if you haven't seen it, that's really worth having a look at. Firstly, postponement under PSSR. So in the regulations, Reg 9 of PSSR says uh, you, can, uh, you need to carry out an examination in accordance with a written scheme by the due date, which we know. The user shall ensure the, the equipment is not operated after that date specified in the examination report. Okay, but, but postponement then, by agreement with the competent person and the user, uh, you can postpone if it does not give rise to danger. However, you're only allowed one such postponement for, for any one examination, and the enforcing authority must be notified by the user in writing before the due date. So that's the key thing there, is to get organized to make sure these def deferrals are made before the due date. It's for the user owner to fulfill all these conditions before the examination can legally be postponed. So missed inspections with no deferral will still require inspection. So you need to make sure none are missed. And the HSC position at the moment, uh, we've been having uh, email correspondence with uh, some HSC personnel, is that they're reviewing current guidance. So. Um, this, this means that the uh, PSSR requirements re remain in force for one postponement. So there is no derogation at the moment. And we know that uh, this has been reinforced by the uh, HSA, the, the uh, Health and Safety Authority in Ireland. Uh, we also know that there are similar questions being asked uh, of uh, bodies in the States. But as of yet, the guidance remains the same. But keep an eye on the HSC and the HSA websites. So postponement under COMA, well, Reg 5 of COMA says every operator must take all measures necessary to prevent major accidents and to limit their consequences for human health and the environment, which uh, doesn't really help us a great deal in terms of postponement. The ACOP just says, Relevant good practice should be adopted as a, as a minimum. So in cases where there's no suitable standard approach for good practice, you're supposed to uh, employ a risk management approach to prevention and mitigation based on first principles. The competent authority will require this to be thoroughly justified. So essentially this says the same practices should be adopted for COMA as under PSSR. 
there's no specific requirement for notification of the HSE in this case. But the expectation uh, is that the, the HSE would treat equipment under coma the same as under PSSR. And finally, around offshore. So for offshore, uh, the safety case regulations, again, says uh, we need to take appropriate measures so that there's no unplanned escapes of hazardous substances. Now, there is an HID inspection guide offshore, which does mention postponement. Um, and here, it's, it's looking at where, where the risk is acceptable, a deferral may be possible. The key things uh, in the HID guide that are interesting are for non-safety critical element related inspections, they should have a level of risk assessment which is appropriate and proportionate to the likelihood and consequences of the failure, which is effectively saying that the higher the risk, the more detailed, the closer you need to have a look uh, at what the risks might be. Risk assessment must also be in place for the cumulative effect of the inability to achieve the inspection program. So here it is saying we shouldn't just look at the individual items. If we're not uh, carrying out uh, a number of inspections, we need to also take good note of what the cumulative effect is. And again, there's no specific requirement for notification of the HSE. So now I'm going to hand over to my uh, my colleague Andy Fisher uh, to talk to you about making the case for deferment. Thank you, Martin. The next few slides, I'm going to be talking about um, postponement of pressure system inspections. It can be applicable to PSSR, COMA, uh, offshore as well. I'm going to be talking through the process, the steps that need to be taken. Um, for each of those, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail. But this first slide shows the sort of the process flow. And a couple of things that I'd just like to point out is it, it can be an iterative process. So if you start off, you can get some fairly quick wins where things are fairly straightforward and you say, yep, it's the postponement is, is acceptable. And I'm, I'm going to uh, define a little bit more detail in how how we decide whether postponement is acceptable or not. But sometimes for high risk items, more complex items, more work needs to be done. Um, so I'll be talking about that um, in detail in a few slides as well. However, um, the preparing the technical case for inspection, postponement, um, let's say the process is not a silver bullet. Um, there will be occasions and there will be there will be some equipment that gets examined where actually it is not appropriate to postpone that for inspection because the risks are too high. So uh, we do ABB as an inspection body, we come across that from uh, quite routinely and we people ask for postponements and we actually we look at it and we do the uh, we look at the technical case and we say sorry and we agree with the user owner but it's not suitable and inspection does need to take place so just looking at the, the starting point this is the information that's needed to start to start the technical case so the first question is probably the hardest uh, for the user owner, the, the operator of the equipment, what is the required postponement period? Because as Martin mentioned, currently under PSSR legislation, you can put one postponement in. So you've got to select your interval that you think is appropriate. So you can't have a second bite at it. Um, so in the current situation, that's quite difficult to predict. Um, and sometimes you may need to think, well, uh, you may need to do the technical case and think, actually, I might say three months, but maybe let's say six months just to give you that comfort factor. Um, so that's the starting because the postponement period, we need that to work out how things are going to deteriorate and what the, out what the outcome may be. 
AVB's experience is that the the written scheme of examination for a piece of pressure equipment will have a inspection interval on. If you're looking for a postponement, generally 20% of that, more than 20% of that, um, you're going to need a little bit more in-depth analysis. Now, some that's a general statement. Sometimes that's not the case at all. The postponement is very straightforward, but this is just a general statement. The what you need is history. You need inspection history. So you need previous inspection reports, NDT data. You need to work out what's the rate of deterioration from previous inspection. If you haven't, if it's a fairly new piece of equipment, that's a little bit more difficult. But then you're looking at similar pieces of equipment on the same duty, made from, made from the same material of construction. And your inspection history should give you quite a lot of data, like predicted corrosion rates, mean time between failure. Um, when I was a plant engineer, I had a vessel that had a um, plastic lining. And from 30 years of experience of running that vessel, we knew that plastic lining lasted for about 10 years before it started to get very small defects from attack from the chemical. So that was our mean time between failure and we could plan our inspections accordingly. So there's inspection history. There's also maintenance history. So as equipment doesn't stand still, repairs are taking place, upgrades are completed, that needs to be factored in. And then since the last inspection, have the operating conditions changed? Have there been any process excursions that may increase any deterioration? And in the current climate, is this data available electronically to allow us to do review and do a technical case remotely? So the key part in preparing the technical case is deciding is the predicted deterioration acceptable? So for a piece of kit, you might have many different types of ways it's going to deteriorate. And they need to be looked at. All of those need to be looked at in turn. The way we do that is we look at the original design of the equipment. It might have a corrosion allowance. The design will may specify the number of operating cycles for design life. For um, non-metallic equipment like GRP, that might have a design life. Now, when it gets closer end of design life, that's obviously that that's obviously increasing the risk of deterioration. We need to think for each way that a piece of equipment can deteriorate, we need to think out, well, if it does, something does happen, how will a failure occur? Will it be a small leak? Will it be a catastrophic crack? Will you lose a small amount of product or will you lose the full contents? And then you need to think about, OK, if it did fail, how quickly would that be detected? Um, that may result in mitigation actions that we'll talk about uh, in a few slides. And then you've got to think of obviously what's the impact if it does fail to people and plant and offsite effects. And it may, and sometimes you, there's obviously the uh, so safety effects plant, but sometimes the actual, the failure itself may not cause issues to people but downstream equipment, if something failed, it could cause a major damage and potentially millions of pounds of damage and a very long shutdown. So these things need to be thought of as well. For complex equipment with multiple deterioration mechanisms, having, having done a risk-based inspection assessment, uh, this is very useful because a lot of the questions will have been asked in an RBI. So if you've got an RBI, you can review that as part of the technical case and maybe update it to bring it up to date with your latest inspection information or complete a new RBI. So for complex high hazard equipment, that's RBIs are very, very useful to do and, and they can be done remotely. Sometimes um, looking at inspection history, you, you might decide that fitness for service calculations need completing. 
looking at what is the corrosion allowance, can we increase the corrosion allowance, can we do some thickness um, some additional calculations against code. The technical case, everything needs to be recorded and you need to record any assumptions that you've made in that. Um, so what we're doing, the technical case is recording the assumptions, we're looking at the risks and then they have to be documented and agreed by the user, owner, operator and the competent person. Um, some postponements, pressure system inspection postponements, might need some mitigation actions to be put in place for the duration of the postponement. So if you're postponing something for six months, you've got to think about doing some extra things just to make sure that doing that postponement, the risk is as low as possible and appropriate. So I guess our experience is that around 30% of postponements that we look at uh, roughly may need some mitigation actions and they can vary. So some examples that we come across um, is looking at how a piece of kit is operated, how can we make deterioration less likely? So can we offer, can we operate at a steady state, um, not putting in lots of extra pressure temperature cycles? That's a good one. Um, do we, can we potentially derate the equipment? Is the actual design pressure much greater than the actual operating pressure? So potentially we can derate that and that may increase the corrosion allowance available. Um, also quite common is for looking at ways to detect leaks at a very early stage. So if something did happen, how quickly could, could we pick that up? And that might be operator on-site tools or actually using your DCS system where you can try systems to look at key operating parameters on a very routine basis to see if there's anything changed that might indicate that um, you have got a failure. One option is looking at uh, for certain items, if looking at restricting personal access, uh, exclusion zones, um, and also for potentially tanks or piece of equipment with a large inventory, um, thinking, well, if it does fail, how quickly can we actually empty the tank so we don't lose the full tank contents? Can we have a contingency plan ready to go that if something does happen, we're going to minimise the amount that we leak, that leaks to ground or bund or atmosphere, etc. And another option is to look at potentially temporary repairs, areas of concern. The couple of slides previously I've been talking mainly about vessels, tanks, uh, piping, um, safety valves, ABB, we generally take a different approach. Um, safety valves, they're a bit more difficult to determine um, how deterioration and what the consequences of what that's going to be. So if a spring deteriorates, what that, what is that going to be? So you've got to make some more simpler assumptions. And when we look at, in our experience, basically safety valves may be the limiting factor in deciding what work you need to do because they may be on shorter intervals than the item they protect. So, so the first stage we would recommend is, well, look at your um, protective device. What's, what's the reason it's there for? Um, what's the What's the relief case needed for? So is it, uh, can the relief case be removed by some sort of operating uh, temporary, uh, temporary way of operating? That's one way to do it. So actually you can remove the, the need for such a safety valve. I guess most common examples of thermal relief valves, they might be protecting sections of pipe work or pipe lines and they're there to prevent um, overpressure within if you block in the pipe work for thermal um, for thermal relief so one way is well let's lock everything open during the po period of postponement that gets rid of the relief case however if the relief device is, is needed 
what we do, ABB, we use sort of a risk matrix approach to determine if postponement is appropriate. Um, and we use a probability, which is based on your previous safety valve testing data, and also the actual process fluid that's that's being protected. Is it uh, clear? Will it will it block? So that's the probability. The consequence is really based on the hazardous nature of the process fluid. Is it toxic? Is it flammable? The volume protected and the type of equipment. So I've talked about how to approach preparing a technical case for sort of small numbers of equipment. If you're looking at looking at a large shutdown where you're looking at potentially hundreds more of inspections that you want to see if they can be postponed. We take a slightly different approach. Um, and the reason being is because there's a lot of work there, you need to prioritize the items to make sure the best resource uh, looks at it, and also that any problems are highlighted as soon as possible. So this process flow here, you can see what we've done is the start point is a list of items requiring postponement. And if, if it's listed by plant unit, that's quite useful because sometimes you can look at to see whether by plant unit, whether that plant unit can be postponed as a whole or whether that plant unit might need a small shutdown. So if you do it by plant unit, that's quite useful from a planning point of view. The next step is we do a criticality study where we look at the what we call the vulnerability during the postponement period, which is asking much the same questions about how things deteriorate during that postponement period. And then we look at the shear consequence if it did fail during that postponement period. So we look in vulnerability is like a likelihood. The shear consequence, again, is based on if if a piece of equipment did fail, what would be the consequence? So what that does is that allows sort of quick wins. They can, they will, they will be identified component is acceptable. For where you haven't got quick wins, we've got basically more complicated piece of equipment or higher risk piece of equipment. You need a bit more work to look at that to see if they're if postponement of the examination is suitable or not. Um, so what you can do, what, what this process allows you to do is, is build up on a by plant basis and say, right, okay, we've got four vessels on unit 300 that is gonna need a little bit of work. Uh, unit 300, we used to think hard about that or unit 500, that's fine. We've got no issues with that, but again, as I mentioned before in the process, um, it's our experience is that uh, unless you're extremely lucky for a large overhaul, you're, it's pretty likely that you're going to have to do some small amount of work because some items won't be able, won't be suitable for postponement. If that's the case, um, considering if non-invasive inspection is a possibility. But again, that needs in-depth thought, um, whether that's whether that's suitable or not, even as a one-off. So we've done, we've helped clients postpone large numbers of equipment for um, shutdowns, turnarounds, and, and this is just our sort of learning and how it works when you're doing the process. For large shutdowns. So uh, the point I made before is not all inspections can be postponed, but the, the aim of the process, particularly in the current climate, may be to minimise the number of such items. Another piece of learning really is that there is a large amount of data needed during this review process. I think in how this is controlled and support you need 
to get the data to the right people, you may need to organize files, have a file structure, um, because the assumption in the current situation, this, 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 would, this process will be done remotely. So that needs some thought. And the criticality approach allows engineering resources to be allocated more efficiently. So your senior staff, they can focus on the more problematic equipment that need a bit more thought. Um, they need to be involved in any risks, talking about the risks, any mitigation measures. And also in the process, you're going to need some sort of action tracking tool because there will be lots of actions coming out to make the process work smoothly. And you want to make sure that everything gets done and you can keep up to date with that. So who needs to approve postponements for pressure equipment? Well, under the uh, PSSR regulations, uh, there's two people. There's the uh, user owner, the operator, uh, and then normally is a designated person responsible for uh, PSSR compliance. They will need to agree and sign off and understand the risk and the uh, PSSR competent person or the inspection authority. So they will need to both both parties will need to agree that the postponement is suitable. The um, HSC need to be notified before the inspection due date. And the documentation, including the technical case, they need to be stored in the available equipment file for future use. For um, other equipment, comb equipment, um, it's much the same process. Um, the only difference is that the HSC does not need to be notified, uh, but records, but record keeping is key. And they need to be um, stored in the development equipment file. That can be electronic. Uh, most people that's electronic now, not paper. Okay, so I'm just gonna hand over to my colleague Martin again for the next part. So this leaves a substantial amount of equipment uh, that is non-statutory, still requiring maintenance and inspection. Um, and we need to go through a similar process, uh, which is uh, fairly rigorous, to answer at least the following questions. Uh, what maintenance is required? Is it, is it major equipment work scope or PM routines? And for these items, which are most critical to the plant? We need to know, again, uh, as for statutory routines, what's the current condition of this equipment? What, what additional activities do we need to do now to confirm this? reviewing records, previous inspection history, uh, any indications of poor reliability, um, maybe do additional visual inspection or operational checks, maybe do some extra condition-based monitoring. Um, you're aware of all the different types, types you can do there, but there may be some things that are very useful to do. What maintenance can be delayed? And what's the risk? What's the impact of delaying it? And what, what additional activities are required to mitigate the risk through the extended run? Maybe additional monitoring, uh, additional routine checks, maybe, in fact, having to reduce the plant load uh, or rate uh, for, for some substantial period. Maybe uh, there's a requirement to uh, establish some sort of contingency plan uh, for uh, failures that might occur. Um, we should be looking at least to make sure that we have our require critical spares in place and available if we need them. So there's a, a, a flow chart here which shows you the sort of process that we would go through. Um, we've talked about uh, the criticality analysis, identifying whether whether the, predict, the predicted deterioration or reliability going forward is acceptable, and then thinking what, what we can do. We can do a review, and if necessary, we can do something more substantial, like an FMEA. But all these things, they take extra time. But we need to we need to understand what mitigation we we need to do, and ultimately decide whether postponement is acceptable for these items of equipment or not. And as Andy said previously, it's very likely that some of these pieces of equipment, you're going to come to the conclusion that you have to do some maintenance now. 
and it's identifying what 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 the critical items are and what's the minimum duration uh, of a shutdown event that uh, that needs to take place. So, assuming that you do have to carry out an outage due to uh, some level of unacceptable risk, um, then uh, the objective is going to be min to minimise that duration. Um, what is the minimum maintenance scope that's required? So you're going to have to go through another process of rescoping to identify what that is. Can we get the resources uh, and competence, people of a certain competence, to carry out that work? Can we obtain the required materials? And if so, when can you get them by? What, what, what would be the duration of that emergency outage that needs to take place? Lastly, what about the timing for the shutdown, which we have mentioned previously? When would it need to be done by in terms of issues with health and safety and reliability? But what's the earliest you could do it in terms of planning, materials and resource availability? And once you've planned it, of course, as usual, you're, you're into thinking what are the defects or maintenance inspection activities could be done at the same time while the while the plant equipment is off. So I'd just like to go uh, ask you another poll question. So this fourth poll question is, what are your biggest plant concerns for postponing your shutdown? If you could possibly click on one of the uh, the options there, please. And it's looking fairly clear what the result is here already. So 59%, 58% of you are worried about legal inspection deferments, which is obviously uh, the title of this uh, webinar and is obviously a concern to us as well. But still people are worried about availability and reliability. Okay, thank you for that. So I'm just going to hand over to Andy again to take us through uh, a number of case studies. Thank you, Martin. So I've got three case studies that uh, ABB involved in, just showing the different outcomes that can that can come out of the deferment process. The first is a vessel um, on overhead receiver on nap nap the sour water duty. The inspection interval originally was five years. Um, the request was for a 18 month postponement period. Um, due to the contents and the actual size of it, uh, the criticality study output said that this had did have a, this was a sort of a high risk item. So it did need a little bit more in depth analysis. So a senior inspection engineer did what we call an authoritative review, uh, which basically looking at the inspection history to date and seeing what the technical justification was or not for the postponement. But actually for this one, the, the inspection history was excellent, really very good. It'd been in service 29 years, very good inspection reporting for those 29 years. Some corrosion had taken place within those 29 years, but even so, you'd had 60% of the corrosion allowance remaining. All the other deterioration mechanisms that had been identified um, had been tested and none, have no, no issues ever found. And uh, a visual, a recent external visual check revealed everything was in good condition, it was well painted. So the, the we thought this was, fine for the 18 month postponement period. Um, so we accepted that was appropriate by both the competent person and the user owner, they accepted that was appropriate uh, and no mitigation actions. One thing I would say that sort of came out of this and you may have that from some of your plant equipment is that sometimes um, inspection reports, they select intervals really just to align the exam next examination with the next scheduled plant overhaul. And this is the case here. So it all had been on five years because the plant overhaul strategy was five years. But actually at the previous inspection, 
the inspector could have put it on potentially eight years without any issue at all. Um, but it was kept on five really for scheduling pro pro purposes. So you might have that, uh, you might have some examples like this on your plant. The next example is actually a sister vessel to the sister vessel to the item we just talked about again on a five year inspection interval again 18 month postponement period was requested um so we did have um say 29 years of internal good inspection history um however externally um there had been some repairs needed to the header boxes the header boxes with inlet and outlet piping um, due to water collecting on the top um, so they'd need they had needed repairs at the last um, turnaround uh, where they'd lost up to five millimeters in local pitting so that that repaired they were they were repaired returned to as built thickness the other issue was that one of the um, one inlet flange had a temporary power clamp fitted after a small leak so this is a engineered um, flange clamp um, so that would fit it a couple of years previously so what we did was we looked at that um, we did an online inspection of the header boxes just to check that they um, that the external corrosion seen previously wasn't occurring it was still in good condition and well painted and we checked that the temporary repair was in good order and the mitigation action for the period of the postponement was to very carefully um, increase the surveillance of the temporary repair during the postponement period so with that mitigation in, in place uh, the 18 month postponement was accepted The final case study is a um, fired steam boiler. So it's a 30 year old steam boiler. This uh, um, steam boilers, they have quite good guidelines of what's needed for an inspection from point of view. Um, the SAFED organization, they provide very good guidelines that generally everyone in industry follows for this type of boiler. Um, during its 30 years, it had to the tube plate, it had it had what called two uh, deep patch repairs, and deep patch repairs are basically um, where cracking or defects have been found. A small area of the tube plate had been taken out, a new section inserted, uh, and it's a recognised repair method for these type of boilers. The so this this boiler. Um, had two deep patch repairs during its life. The request was for a 20, 12 month postponement. Um, the next inspection was a full NDT, but the the new deep patch repair, although it would tested after installation during fabrication, it hadn't been tested since. Um, the water quality of the water, uh, the boiler feed water feeding. The steam boilers that was reviewed that was in control that's key for anything for steam boilers like this and all the protective device testing that was that was completed no issues relief valves no water no low water um, high temperature all those things have been tested satisfactorily and the routines for monthly testing weekly testing were all in place and working well so Really, due to this deep patch repair issue, we decided that for um, a full 12 months, so basically 12 months postponement period of like 100% of the uh, request of the existing uh, inspection period, we didn't think that was appropriate. So we went for six months with a mitigating action was to say that actually the operator needs to be at steady state. So what that means is it's at temperature all the time it's not it doesn't act as a swing boiler it's not on and off you're keeping it at the temperature and pressure at the same time just to minimize any pressure cycling uh, particularly that might 
resulting cracking, particularly around the deep patch area. So that's a final case study. So we've got the final poll questions. So the poll questions are what really what does for you guys on the seven, on this webinar now what what do you need what what help do you need with postponement of shutdowns okay thank you so we've got about well, no, 50 just over 50 percent want guidance on legal compliance during the current the current covid 19 situation um the and then about 25 percent want clarity on on how long the situation is going to last. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to my colleague, uh, Martin Brown again. So thanks, Andy. So just to summarize uh, the presentation, um, we've identified that uh, there are additional risks of carrying out large shutdowns at the moment. Uh, and we've looked at why you might want to postpone your shutdown. We've, we've also looked at the risks of postponing uh, inspections and shutdowns uh, and the fact that you might uh, need to put in place mitigation measures. Um, there's clearly the need to regress the legal obligations uh, when doing this. And for that, you need a technical case for postponement, uh, which needs to be reviewed and authorised by the user owner as well as the inspection authority. We've said that... Uh, a similar structured risk-based approach um, should be adopted for non-statutory maintenance, which actually is, may take uh, uh, may make up a large part of the equipment that's going to be uh, maintained in the shutdown. And when you've done all this, it might not be possible to postpone all of this work, and it may be inevitable that you're going to have to have some sort of uh, uh, shutdown, and hopefully it's a short short duration shutdown. Um, and you've still got to plan that. So a lot of work there for all of you, I'm sure, at the moment. Um, our message to you is don't let COVID-19 beat you. Um, plan now and stay safe. If you have any further questions you'd like to ask or if you'd like to discuss uh, any issues with us, please contact uh, uh, Andy Fisher or myself, Martin Brown, directly. OK. Uh, well, it just remains for me to say thank you for joining myself, Andy and Paul today. Um, we hope to be in touch with you all again uh, in the future. Thank you and goodbye.